Hi, everyone. Tom Stewart here, Cleaning Business Today. I've got my partner, Liz Trotter, and we've got a special guest today. Matt Ricketts is uh, going to help us with, uh, I guess, a couple of topics. Uh, we want to start off uh, to talk a little bit about good work habits, uh, which is kind of really important when your world gets turned upside down and all of our current, for a lot of us anyway, our, our habits that we've developed uh, have, have been um, been disrupted because of changes in our business and you know work from home and and and, and whatnot. We need to kind of regroup and make sure that we're using our time wisely and productively. And uh, you know we've had some discussions over the last number of days amongst ourselves. And uh, Matt, you know you want to you want to share with us a little bit uh, what the, what some of the yeah. best yes yes. Yeah, so, I mean I you know I don't have. I don't profess to be to have all the answers, but I, over the last few years, I've made a lot of changes, uh, you know, in my life about just getting back to structure and, um, you know, having, you know, having, you know, structure being a big part of how I define my day. And, and that's been really big in getting through this. I, I'll be the first to admit this whole thing is, is stressful, whether you have a big company or a small company. Oh. Yeah. We're getting some feedback. I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, I was thinking, you know, just to talk a little bit about, you know, what, what, how I start my day, what we're doing, um, you know, who people that I'm surrounding myself with, and then some just daily habits, and then just some of the planning that I'm doing for, um, you know, for not just the financial stuff, the financial stuff I know we're all, we all want to know about. Um, we all want to talk about PPP. We all want to talk about the disaster loan. Um, and we will probably get into some questions on that and what we've done and, and what we're planning to do. I know me and Tom, uh, jump on a call every day, um, nine 30, his time, eight 30, my time. That's one of the, the things we've kind of scheduled out either a half hour to an hour just to kind of, you know, kind of download what we've learned from the last day and, um, kind of, um, you know, start, start our morning after, you know, after we've kind of sifted through a bunch of information and, and just, make sure that we're all kind of understanding the things the same way. So um, typically, you know, before this all started, I used to get up at 5 a.m. every morning. I'm struggling with that habit. I think that's a really good habit. But if I don't have to be up that early, it's like it's really hard to do that. But I am still getting up and trying to get a workout in in the morning. Um, I've already run 20 miles this week. I know that sounds ambitious. You don't have to go out and do that. My, my goal is to, to knock out 30 miles this week on on running, that would be a new weekly record for me other than a week that I've run a marathon or something like that. And then, uh, you know, I've been on the bike about 150 miles since Saturday and, um, you know, just carving out that time for working out, f figuring out how to keep those kind of healthy habits in. Um, I, you know, one of the things that I've learned about from, from you know, the process of doing that stuff is, is your body can only take so much stress. And exercise is stress too, but it can also relieve some of the stress and tension uh, of what's going on. And so, you know, carving out some time for some of those he those healthy ha hobbies that you have, and it doesn't have to be running or biking or anything like that. It could be just going on a walk around your neighborhood and making sure you keep social distance going and all that stuff. But I think taking some time now to actually decompress from your day is is really a super important thing. And I think a lot of people are going to be um, are going to be happy with themselves for making those those changes to their you know to their time now. We've got extra time. I know it seems like we've got a million emails to do, but if you really look at it and you break your day into into chunks, I mean, most of the emails and stuff we we do, we could look at that once every five hours and still be just as productive instead of staring and waiting for you know the next email to come in. And I'm equally guilty of that, you know. But um, you know, that's sort of a that's sort of a way that I start my day. Um, again, I have a I have a circle of people that I trust that I that I'm involved in business with that I that I make sure I touch base with every day. Um, I reach out to my banker every day just to find out what he knows. I reach out to my accountant every day to see if he's got any different insight on things. So I am just letting him know that I'm there, especially the banker, um, that I'm there and that I'm uh, thinking about him and I want him to make sure that he sends me over any information that's pertinent as soon as possible. So I'm leveraging all those those networks those, those networks. Um, I'm also working on, I'm also structuring out my day and making time to work on all of my marketing. So, so my brand has always been about being green and clean and all that. Now it's about, I'm kind of circling back to what Tom does and talking about uh, cleaning for health and the science of cleaning and 
all this stuff that I used to give him crap about that I said, nobody cares about. Nobody cares about ATP meters and, and the science of cleaning. Now I'm like, man, I got to get an ATP meter. I got to know about this stuff. So I'm really trying to, I'm trying to, first off, I've always, I've always known about a lot of this stuff. I just didn't think it was important to market. Um, but our operations have to be incredibly tight. So I'm working on, I'm working on communicating that stuff through my brand a little bit better. So I'm spending time every day on that. Uh, and then I'm carving out time to rework my marketing materials all the way down from my safety manual to include um, what we're doing now in a, in a world with COVID-19. Um, and, and, and then I'm going to work on just, you know, how to, uh, how to express those things to my customers and to my employees, you know, and, and I'm making those times and scheduling it out every day. I really suggest you use a calendar and you break your day into, into chunks. You, you carve out time to take a lunch with your wife or husband or family, or, you know, if you don't have anyone close to you and you're living at home and doing this all on your own, then, you know, making some time for some virtual friendships and things like that, where you're spending some time with people, but put it on the calendar. i you know, Liz has always thought this is a cute thing, but I've always, I've always for years had a lunch or breakfast date with my wife every day um, where, where we don't have the kids and that's hard now. Um, and we just sit down and talk about what's going on with the business, personal stuff. And uh, that's always been a scheduled activity um, as part of our relationship. So if you, you know, if you're not into, into scheduling and you're not into structured time, maybe some of my advice on this stuff, you know, is, is over you and you're just like, no, I'm not gonna do it that way. But I, I find in times like this that just really structuring out your time when it feels like you know everything's falling apart, it, it seems to help. So uh, that's you know, that's sort of my my what I want to talk about and see uh, you know how you guys are spending your guys' days with uh, COVID-19 being the the main focus of everything we're doing. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, it's uh, kind of a different world out there for for a lot of us for the moment. I guess for all of us in one way or another. But uh, um, there's a lot of opportunity, I guess, in in, in this disruption and change. So stopping back and, and and giving some thought as to, you know, really, what what do I do with this? So, you know, I got a I've got you know, there's a lot of things that need to be done, but at the same time, how I arrange my day and how I use my time. Um, can be very much different now. So it's an opportunity. Let's, uh, let's uh, make sure that we're making the best out of it. Um, what do you think, Liz? Well, I really like a structured day. I do better when I have like very structured schedule. I'm doing this at this time, this at this time. So I, I, I'm still open. So my days are different than y'all's. Um, because I'm still open, I'm still getting up at five, I'm still doing my morning routine. And um, the thing that's changed is I'm, I have to, I have to shift my schedule around and make sure that I, I give time to the people that need to talk about, you know, the, the, the pandemic and make sure that that's in my schedule, but also bite, bite size it so that it doesn't just take up my whole entire day. Uh, otherwise, I know a lot of people and all of the different groups <laughs> all want to talk about the pandemic at some point in time. And I could easily get sucked into, you know, an entire day or multiple days of just talking about it. So, um, Matt, you and I are in one group together and sometimes I'll go to that group and there's been like 250 messages that I haven't read. I'm like, yeah. Right, I hadn't I'm been in that group for a while. It's, I hadn't been in that group for a while. And then uh, Sarah's like, well, we want you to come back. And I was like, all right, fine. But it does like some of those groups can take up a lot of your time because you're looking yeah. at all these things and do it. Do I need to catch up on this? Do I need to? And I mean, I'm, I'm equally guilty that I like to jump in those things and, and converse. But I, I think like you have to you have to limit those times. Tell me about your 5 a.m. habit, though, because I think that's a great habit. Like when I'm when I'm really on my best game, I really admit that like 5 a.m. is actually a really powerful habit. Um, I'm off it right now because I just like I'm over getting up that early if I don't have to. But you're still working. You're still doing your thing. So what do you do at 5 a.m.? What's your what's your morning routine like? All right. So I get up at five and I make my coffee the night before. So I go and I hit my coffee um, and, and my coffee takes uh, about 25 minutes. So while I'm waiting for my coffee, I go into I have another room that's really quiet and dark. It's five o'clock. And um, my cats don't go in there, which is really important for me. 
and um, uh, I, I read for uh, usually about 20 minutes, and then I I call it meditating. Nobody else in their right mind would ever call it meditating, but I after I've read, I just sit for like five to 10 minutes and sort of process what I've read and um, what I'm going to do about what I read, and um, uh, and this this thing that I'm reading in the morning is like a self improvement something, uh, or it, it might be a biography or something like that. Um, and then after that, I go and I uh, make myself coffee, and then I hit the shower. And the reason why I do it in that order is it gives me another 15 minutes to sort of ramp up for my day. My shower gives me another 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and during that time, I start thinking about you know, my schedule, like I said, I always have a schedule. The night before I looked at my schedule. And so during the day, I'm like, okay, just a reminder, I have a call with so and so I have a call, I have a mastermind meeting today, I have, you know, whatever the things are. And then, um, and that's it. And then I, once I'm out of the shower, bam, I'm ready to go I get my hair done, my my face done, get dressed, and I'm out. And I, I feel energized by doing that. It like, gets me excited for my day. Yeah, I like that. I like that you schedule out your day the day before. So, like one thing, I, I try to do that as well, and kind of go over what I have. And I always try and leave a couple of blocks open for things that are going to come up through the day, or for overrun if things can go a little longer. So I'm not rushing people off the phone if um, if something else comes up. Um, but yeah, I definitely like the idea of that. And, and again, um, you know, those are just habits to to kind of put into place that you know that I think are great. A book that I, I'm reading right now, that I, even though I'm not doing the 5 a.m. thing, um, Robin Sharma is uh, he, he is hard to read sometimes because he likes to tell everything in a story, but he has a good message. And, I love that. Uh, yeah, Robin, Char Robin Sharma has a book. I think it's called like the 5 a.m. Miracle or something like that. Um, I think I, I, I may be butch butchering the name of the book, but uh, I'm reading it right now, and he, he t always tells it in the form of a story instead of just getting right into like what you're actually supposed to be learning uh very you know you know sometimes it's hard to get into these things because you know it's kind of cheesy but um he wrote another one called um uh the leader without a title i think or the basically and it's just a lot of these books that he has are just about habits about you don't need to be called the, the president of a company to act like a leader and i i used to do a lot of training with my managers on that and i got out of the habit of it and that's going to be something I'm going to rework as far as, you know, when this is done, um, I think my time as an absentee owner is over. Like this is, uh, it's, it's back to the hustle and grind because we're all, we're all back. I mean, it's not, it's not zero. It's zero. It's, it's 12,000 from 170,000 right now. I mean, we're, we're, I'm technically still open, but just doing commercial spaces right now and doing, um, doing apartments with common areas and things like that. Um, so, that is a uh, that is a big a big difference financially. But even when we restart, we're not starting from zero. We have so much structure, and we have we have so many assets. And and what you don't realize is your assets are things like your website. Your assets are things like your your systems. Your assets are things like your your employees that are already that are going to come back, whether some do or some don't. You're not going to start from zero. It's even if you shut down, it's it's gonna, it's not like you're gonna just be able to turn the water back on either, you know, whether, however you get slowed down from this, um, it's, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit of a slog to get back, to get back up, but we're all gonna get there. Liz, I wanna hear a little bit more about you. So you're still open and Washington is, is a state that had an outbreak early on. So your area kind of seems like it kind of peaked and, and kind of peaked early and it's kind of on the downslide there or what's going on? Well, it kind of looks like that, but we're not expected to still see our, our peak date for 13 more days. Okay. So, so we're not quite there yet. It's just, um, you know, everybody else still kind of looks like this and we look more a little bit like this. Okay. So, so that's good. So you guys kind of, you did what yeah. you did what the hope was. That's what we're seeing in St. Louis. We're looking at a peak of not all the way till March or I'm sorry, May 24th, because we're not going to have a steep peak like some of these places yeah. and it's going to be. Um, so, you know, peak resources and peak and peak use in St. Louis is all the way out till May 24th with some of the early social distancing and things that we did. Um, but that, that sucks because it was one of the things I was using as a criteria for like reopening, like, all right, we're past peak. We're seeing a decline in, in the uh, frequency of, of, of this. So, so what's the psychology of your, of your, uh, of your, how, how are your employees holding up? I know you're really leading them through this well, I'm sure. 
Um, what are you doing? Like, what's what's the you know? So your 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 staff and your and your I guess there's two people. I guess two groups that you're really leading through this is your is your clients and your and your staff and like yeah. what does that look like? You know, you're open and it's it's probably very stressful and scary. Um, you know what? I it only gets stressful and scary like around four thirty five in the morning, <laughs> right? So, which is good timing because that's when I'm going to uh, put some effort into chilling out and relaxing and and getting into a good space again. So, luckily for me, it doesn't it doesn't really impact my day too much. I have um, I sort of set my course and I've decided on um, what my belief system is. And my belief is that there aren't enough people out there that are helping to solve this problem, that everybody's kind of running away from it, trying to, and, and I really appreciate that people are self-quarantining. We, that's super helpful, but not everybody can. And for the people that can't, don't know how, um, and just aren't, uh, somebody still needs to be helping those people so that they're not just out there making things crazy. I mean, we're so still that's, getting- That's what we're doing. We're still getting a lot of requests. I mean, I, yeah. I, I am, I, I am definitely hopeful. The first week, the week, you know, spool back up, we're going to be, you know, full on busy. But, um, you know, yeah. I mean, I think again, it's just, it's just, you know, those are there's, there's some tough choices involved in this, and um, you know, our region made it pretty clear that that's not really a choice for us. So, you know, we're going to just go with, we're going to go with what what they're doing. I do think it is, it is region by region, and it's and it's definitely. Um, I think I could do it. I don't think I, I, I was having trouble with the staff a little bit, that piece, like, you know, um, with, with, you know, um, leading them through this. And, um, you know, I think that you're probably doing a really good job on, on that part of like keeping them calm and, and understanding that yes, while there's a risk, the risks are low. And, and so how does that look? Like, how are you kind of leading them through, through this right now? Uh, well, I have I have been around for a lot of it, um, but I've been um, leading everybody through Facebook. So we have a Facebook group, and I'm on there every day. Well, I'm on there at least once a day. I do at least one Facebook Live, and then I'm throwing resources on all the time. Uh, okay. My style is uh, very open communicative. So every time I hear about something, I'm throwing it in the group. Hey, you guys, here's what's going on. This is why we're doing this. This is why we're not doing that. So my people are kind of pumped. My people are kind of like, like maybe not first responder status, but they kind of have that feeling. Okay. And um, we took a, a page out of, of a lot of the stuff that you were doing, Matt. And, you know, a lot, everybody across the country has had customers that are like, I just want to continue paying for my service. You know, I'm donating money. I'm buying gift cards. Yeah. And so one of the things we did was um, we appealed to them that, you know, our people are out there cleaning. A lot of these people don't have other options and opportunities to do, you know, they're not going to be getting on unemployment. They're not going to be doing all of this stuff. And so we've been getting a lot of donations for our employees. And that's been yeah. really, really good, too. So that's something wow. I, I was going to talk about that we've set up. Uh, I set it up yesterday. I created an, I created a sub account in my QuickBooks for an employee assistance fund. I got the idea from Joe Walsh. So uh, you know Joe Walsh had some really good communication on this. So I'm donating the first thousand dollars into this employment um, uh, employee assistance fund. And what I'm hoping to do is raise about four thousand dollars and buy gift cards for employees and um, be able to give every employee a hundred dollar gift card while we're off before they get their first um, for before they get their first uh, check. And so uh, Sarah Mitchell had a question if you wanted to, to respond to that. Yeah, let's see. Mm -hmm. um, I was just responding to Rebecca's that nobody's been sick. Um, no, uh, we are not currently currently paying any more. Uh, whether or not we're going to do that moving forward, um, we did have some people that were nervous or scared to work and we just kind of worked through that. That, that my message is, yeah, it, it would not be, it, it wouldn't be an intelligent decision to not be scared. A lot of times we're scared of things and that's, that's how you grow in this, in this lifetime is you don't just shrink from everything that scares you. There are times when you have the answer and you have the solution and so it's your time to step up and, and this is your time. And so that's been working really well for a lot of our, we have a lot of people in our company that are high anxiety and um, a lot of our people take meds for their anxiety problems. And so I thought, 
we're going to have a lot more problems, but now people are kind of pushing through. Hey, Denise. I had one yeah, other thank you. thing. So Sarah, uh, Sarah Mitchell, to your thing, um, Tom didn't necessarily agree with this when I, when I told him what I was doing, but uh, I, I went to all my commercial accounts that wanted to stay open and I, I told them we would need, we would need a $12 an hour override on their, on their hourly rate um, to continue to, st to staff them. Because I mean, honestly, my staff going on unemployment versus ones that are all being laid off versus the four that I, that I have kept on, um, I, I needed to incentivize them to do that versus, you know, since we were laying off most of our staff versus Liz that wasn't. So it just, I think it depends on where you, where you are. And in, in St. Louis, I mean, there's probably people that would do it cheaper, but the, the businesses that we were dealing with had enough value in our relationship to see that, that it was a short, a short term thing. And we were able to reduce the scope of work on a lot of those properties. Cause I told them we didn't want to clean gyms or any common spaces where people were sweating profusely or anything like that right now. We didn't think that was a good, safe use of our time. Uh, we wanted to shut down as many public restrooms in the building as feasible. Like they still need public restrooms for if they're showing the place or for the workers. But we wanted, to, we, so we closed down a lot of spaces. So we reduced the scope of the work so that their, that their bill rate is, is higher, but their actual total bill is gonna be similar um, to, what it was, to what it was prior. So we went from having three full-time people on one property to two, um, and then split another property that had one full-time person on each. And we split that, and then and then I have another person who's backing them up. So, so the uh, end result is you're getting a higher hourly bill rate, but just billing less hours. Exactly. So they're they're going to be fairly they're going to be fairly flat on the bill. Uh, they did a crap ton of turns last month, and we didn't. That wasn't at a higher bill. So their bill when I was running when I was processing it, you know, today or yet today's the second when I was doing it yesterday, and I was looking at all their bills. One of them had like an eight thousand dollar bill, and I was kind of choking for a second. I was like, did we mess up? Did I do something wrong? But no, they just did a ton of turns. And I was like, okay, good. I can't wait for that check. <laughs> like that, that check's going to feel good right now. Like normally I just think of that as like, oh, that's my fun money check. Now I'm like, that's my pay my people check. Like, that yeah, we, we just uh, went through an exercise earlier today when we're looking at what is the actual cash burden rate across each branch and yeah. How much revenue do we need in order to be revenue neutral in each branch and accounts that didn't look very important to us in the past or like, gee, we need two more crummy accounts just like these so <laughs> we can pay all the bills. Yeah. Hey, when when, when to, uh, jumped on this call actually before we did and asked a question and it's a, I guess it's a multi-part question. So uh, we should probably see if we could address that. She's asking or making a statement that she's struggling with the $10,000 emergency funds. We plan to apply for the payroll protection program as it is forgivable. Hearing if you take the 10,000, number one, you have to apply for EIDL or two, the 10,000 advance is not forgivable or three is netted against any PPP loan you receive. Have you found any clarity to the bill, question mark? Can you apply for both PPP and EIDL? So I think it's 10,000. I mean, from my understanding, it's 10,000 forgivable, forgivable regardless, but I think you're going to need to get clarity from that from your own financial advisor. But Tom, would you agree, no matter whether you'd go for the PPP or not, it appears it, that the 10,000 for applying $10, is dollars is presented as a grant. By definition, you do not pay a grant back. Right. Some of the other programs like the EIDL and PPP is initially presented as a loan where if you meet certain criteria and do certain things, some of it can be converted into a grant. But the initial 10,000, just by definition of it being a grant, I think that if you, you know, whatever you get out of that program, you are not obligated. You you're not expected to pay that back. Yeah, and my my thoughts are so I'm definitely I would suggest everyone applies for the EIDL, the emergency, the disaster, the disaster loan. I, I I don't I can't see any reason why not to at least apply for it, take the grant, and honestly, the money isn't going to be there's going to be no interest, no payments due for at least six months. Um, it's it, it's money in the bank is is oxygen at this point. Like you you cannot have enough oxygen. I don't, I don't think, I mean, it's, it's just, it's breathing room for a rainy day. So I'm taking it all. I mean, and, I, and I'm sick of writing checks from my, from myself to my business. 
Um, and I'm hoping that I don't have that I get this money before before April's over, so I don't have to write myself another draw um, to do that. You know, so um, and not everyone's in the same position where they have personal savings and can do that indefinitely. I, I can't do that indefinitely, but can do that for a while. Um, you know, and but I don't want to have to do that. So the disaster loan I'm going to take the PPP. I'm struggling to wrap my head around what's best because is it the tax credits? Because I'm not sure that I'm going to get my business spooled all the way back up to where. I have 40 people employed again or 44. To, I, I got to look at what I had on my last, you know, my last uh, whatever period they were looking at as far as um, full-time employees or full-time equivalents and how that they're judging that. So I've got to look at that. Um, but I'm not 100% certain I'm going to be schooled back up by June 30th. I mean, that's, that's a concern to me where it might not make sense to take the PPP loan um, I'm still going to apply and and see what happens and make a determination, but um, one of the one of the concerns with that is is that there was only so much money allocated on this first round. Me and Tom talked about it today. What, what does it make sense to wait till the end of April to apply? Potentially, but then the money might be gone, and then you're waiting on whether the the government throws more money in the pot or not. And we think they will, but we're just making assumptions based on how bad we think that unemployment is going to be and how much the government wants to prop things up. So. Um, what are your thoughts, Tom? Are, are you going to apply for the PPP right away? Or are you going to try and wait? Or I'm not going to rush out tomorrow and do it. Yeah. I believe if they blow through the initial $395 billion, you just think about that for a minute. Just even saying that's kind of weird. Yeah. They'll, they'll go back for more. Uh, Steve Mnuchin, the Secretary of the Treasury, says that they'll do it. Uh, I've heard both uh, parties in, in Congress say they would do it. I mean, there's nobody in the political world is, is going to not, not, you know, throw more cash out there for small business if, it, if it's needed. Um, you know, the tax credit is, is an interesting, you know, option weighing, you know, the benefit of PPP versus tax credit. You know, there's some, un, some, some uncertainty in terms of, of what criteria do you need to meet in order to qualify for the tax credit so that's, um, that's a good question i wanted to i want to point that out so if you've stayed open if you've stayed open and haven't had less than 50 like so the the tax credits your business needs to be affected by 50 percent or more um to qualify that's one criteria so if you've been able to stay open through this and you're slog slogging along definitely the ppp is a better option for you if you shut down completely and you're not sure you're going to spool back up in time for that June 30th deadline to get all of the PPP funds and you're just going to get some sort of portion back, um, then, then it might be better not to have taken the PPP funds and just work the tax credit angle. It just depends on how bad you need the capital too. I mean, if you need the capital, PPP is, it's cash in your pocket, you're paying people. And if you don't spend it all on that right away, then you can, you can continue to use it um, for payroll past that initial point. They're not going to ask you to pay it back. But I think it's going to be fairly short term. I don't know that it's going to be like the, the the disaster loan where it's like 30 years. It might only be like four years, two years, you think? Two years. Two years. Two years. So that's a pretty short term loan uh, to take out. Two, you know, For me, my payroll would be somewhere between 250 and 300,000, depending on how they calculate this. And that hurts my head to think about a two year loan for $300,000 that I would that I would potentially not hit all the targets for and not and not get paid back for. So I, I struggle with, I struggle with that one a little bit. Um, and that's, that's going to be a tough, uh, that's going to be a tough choice um, when it comes down to it. So for me, disaster loan, yes. Um, PPP, I'm going to hold off on to see how my spool back up looks. And if, if it looks like we're spooling up really well, and it might be advan advantageous to get that money um, and do that versus the tax credits, then I'll, then I'll do that. But I think for for my for my situation, the tax credits is probably better, and I I might not have said that a week ago, um, but I feel like that this is going to be an ongoing issue in my region, and and it's going to the psychology of it is going to slow us down for a while, unless I can pivot and find some more business, and I'm looking at that too, and pivoting towards more commercial. But you got to remember, we all want to pivot towards commercial. There's going to be all of us trying to pick up you know all these commercial jobs, and uh, some small commercial operators. Are, are going to be out there lowballing bids just like they always have been. So it's not going to be like there's just going to be all this commercial work just to fall in our laps either. So Winter, I don't know if that is, you know, it's not an exact answer to your question. I guess yeah. your question, you know, do we, 
Do we have, have clarity on all of this? No. The question, can you apply for both PPP and EIDL? I believe the answer to that question is yes. Yes. You need, you need different reasons technically. Like, so I, I talked to my banker and he's like, well, you need, so, so you need different reasoning between the two. And I can't quite, we, we talked about a little bit, like what were, what our reason for one versus the other was, what would you say the reason would be? If you do, if you do just EIDL, you can use those funds for, for, for payroll. If yeah. you do EIDL and PPP, then the PPP, I think, has to go for, for payroll and the EIDL for, for other things. And I'm, I don't know. I've seen so much stuff over the last week that it's all kind of blurry. But I, at one point, that was the thinking anyway. Yeah. So but long, long, long-winded long answer. Um, Liz, I think your situation where, where you are operating still, the PPP might be the – it might just be like freaking gold in your pocket. I mean, because you're – still operating, you're going to be able to get paid to pay people that you're already paying them. And so that's a, that's a win-win. You, you know, how much, how much down are you as far as people? Have you had to lay anyone off? Or are you still operating pretty close to full? Well, no, we're not. We are down 30% on our people. Um, and we're not, it's not necessarily laying people off, but it's a combination of, you know, you, you had a couple of symptoms, you had a sore throat and okay, you're off for two weeks and now you've got a, couple of daycare issues. All right, you're off for another two weeks, you know, so we're Got dealing it. with a lot of that right now. So, but but yeah. it, it's all going to be based on your current business situation. So like someone like yeah. Liz, that's, that's been able to, to remain open through this, I would say that's a, the PPP is a slam dunk for her. Um, that's, that's just a win on top of a win. But it's still a timing thing. So yeah. I, I still need to be figuring out when can I get the maximum amount of, amount of people. Yeah, but June, uh, okay. by June thirtieth is what your time frame is, and for you, yeah. if you never shut down, I think you're not going to have the spool up issues that that maybe Tom and I did um, for our operations, and and that's you know, and again, you know, it's going to be just very individual. So I, I I personally would think that your situation, I would take that money and figure that out because you know you could you could hire a couple extra people just to do door hangering and things like that to make up the difference. Uh, you know, yeah. and bring in an internal marketing person and pay that person and maybe bring on some positions that you traditionally haven't had in your company. And, mm -hmm. you know, you know, at least for a short period of time. And then if it doesn't work, or maybe they're an intern, I don't know. <laughs> but that's for eight weeks. And at the end of the eight weeks, then you need to ask yourself, what are you going to be in? So yeah, you're right. I mean, there's so many different angles to this. And yeah, there is day, no one right answer. Yeah. And every day that goes by is like, you know, months worth of information and you get more insights and it's just, you know, we'll figure it out, but we're not going to have all the answers at, at, at this moment. Yeah. I did, I did hear from a, from a fairly reliable source that a lot of the larger banks are really struggling with the PPP uh, loan because they're going to be facilitating that with, with the SBA that they're looking for guidance. They haven't gotten it. Um, that they're not really going to be able to hit the ground running. Supposedly, they're supposed to be in a position to start doing those applications at midnight tonight. But I understand a lot of the, the larger banks are not going to have it together tomorrow in order to be able to do that. I understand yeah. some smaller banks are starting to take some information, but I don't know. You know, it'll be interesting to see tomorrow what that really looks like. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be I mean, I think it's going to be interesting to see how much that each individual bank can even lend. I mean, um, you know, so I, I have a small, I have a large bank and a small bank relationship. I have, you know, something called Midwest Bank Center and I have U.S. Bank. And um, I've been dealing mostly with Midwest Bank because, I, you know, I have a good relationship with the banker. His kid goes to my school. We talk all the time. Um, and anyway, like, you know, he's been incredibly helpful. But, uh, you know, we, we talked about like what his bank's reserves are and like, you know, what would be what it's going to look like for them. He doesn't even know. Like, like they're like, he's like, we can't go th below a certain threshold and just throw money out the door because that puts us into an unstable situation. So, you know, he's like, we have good reserves to make a lot of to make to make a lot of this lending hot possible. And the fact that it's backed by the government is great, but we still have financial risk markers that we can't go below. So we can't just throw money out the door just because they tell us to. So you know, the Federal Reserve uh, announced last night that they're lowering the reserve requirements on banks on several. I mean, there's a lot of different types of reserves they have to have, but they're loosening it up uh, as recently as last night on banks in terms of the amount of money they have to have in reserve. 
Okay. I don't know if that substantially changes that particular situation or not, but they're more and more they're they're, they're trying to, to to get more money out there. Um, let's see. We had a question here. Heather uh, says she jumped on late. And wants to know which uh, I guess loan program does she need to uh, go through to get the grant? Um, that would be the EIDL, and I pasted a link in in the chat down here, uh, Heather, and also at the end of the the. Uh, discussion here i'll show you in cleaning business today um where we've got our resource page and it would have that link on it it's really easy to go there and fill out your information it's on the sba website it takes about 15 minutes maybe and um you, if you haven't done that you really really want to do that yeah and even before you know some of this ppp money and this edi like we're all talking like it's going to happen and it's going to save us tomorrow i would so I just got, while we were sitting here, I just got an email from my banker. I had applied for a line of credit with a couple of banks, uh, my, my larger bank and my smaller bank. And I just got noticed that we got approved for a pretty large line of credit. So that's that's something I would be working on in the short, in the interim too, while you're working on all this stuff and you're getting all these documents together anyway, potentially, you know, some short-term funding, if you can secure it would be, would be good. And Tom, Tom really turned me on to that outside of the scope of 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 the sba i yeah i i did because i wasn't sure what the timing was and i know it makes my wife nervous every time i'm like i gotta take a ten thousand dollar draw from our savings <laughs> I, know, I know she loves that so much because i think for her like that money represents like like food and like <laughs> and shelter and drawing off that money means less food less shelter we have a pretty good amount of savings and um, you know, for her, that's like every time I touch that, she like gets really nervous. So I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll do some debt. And I wasn't, and I've never really been big on business debt. And I know a lot. I hear from a lot of people like, oh, I don't do debt. I'm like, I would have never said I would have needed debt for a cash flow business either. Like this is a cash flow business, right? We we all kind of think like, um, you know, we don't need debt to run a cash flow business because there's no there's no receivables typically. Like my receivables are like less than 15,000 a month typically. Um, you know, it's not like I'm waiting 90 days to get paid. I don't need to float things, but now we're looking at being 90 days out from getting paid. So, you know, get, setting up some lines of credit that'll float you through this. And, and bef you know, I'm hearing different numbers. Like I'm hearing April 13th, they would start funding these things. I don't know how they're gonna do that. I mean, that's like next Friday, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's incredibly fast. So if they, if it, if it happens that fast and I'm wrong, I was talking um, to somebody earlier today who, um, actually had a discussion with, with somebody working in the SBA asking about the $10,000 grant. And he was told that that might be three weeks out because you're just so far behind. Yeah. And I was presented like it was supposed to hit the bank in three days, right? right. Three days from the time you applied. And, and then I got an email from them to reapply if I wanted that and I put, put my bank account information, I thought I was getting scammed because I'm like, government doesn't typically like ask you for your bank account routing information. So I was like really checking carefully that this was like the SBA's website and I wasn't getting spoofed somehow. Um, but no, like that, that, that application, if that application that they have on there is first of all, it's, it's nothing. If you haven't done that yet, it's like, it's 10 minutes, maybe. Yeah, I've seen credit card applications that are more, Oh, Work. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's it's hard to imagine that they're going to be loaning that much money with the such thirty money. the thirty five thousand dollar line of credit that I that I was just approved for took days and days and like I literally just sent them a, a sent them a statement today with like how like you know like a, they were they're like oh I need we need a different statement from this account and this account because we have different savings in different places and they're like okay okay fine like I'll keep giving you stuff but I like this thing was like. You just go to your QuickBooks and what's your what's your PL? Okay, what's your what's your top number? What's your cost of goods sold? And that's all I mean, that's the only two numbers it asks. If you keep good books or okay books, like you should be you should be fine. I don't keep like Tom level books, and I'm gonna like that's gonna be something I'm gonna change through this process is is uh is be on my books better because it took me a few hours to fix my books uh to get ready for all this process. So that was that was a headache that I had to I had like a whole bunch of columns of things that I still hadn't gone through from last year that I needed to fix still uh, that were like like all tagged by my accountant like, hey, Matt, what the hell is this? <laughs> and so I had to go through and fix all that. So if you keep better books than me, it takes 10 minutes. It took me a few hours because I had to go fix all that stuff. But Liz, do we have, do we have any other questions? 
Um, other people are answering questions as we're going as well. Tom, um, Chris gives an idea. Check to see if your county is offering anything. So don't just be thinking about all of the Fed stuff that everybody else is talking about. What is your, your county um, offering? Her county is offering grants for local small businesses. My county is also offering um, a couple of different things. So look and see what, what what's being offered locally. Yeah. Yeah. That, that reminds me, the uh, tell it like it is question for yesterday. We kind of skipped over that. Do we want to fit that in here now so we can? Uh, yes, yeah. please. Okay. Um, the, the question came up about, you know, how does the $1,200, uh, I guess, economic stimulus check that, you know, most of us are supposed to be getting, uh, you know, when are we going to see that and how does that work? Um, the uh, Secretary of the Treasury uh, was was uh, making a statement as recently as yesterday. Um, you're going to be getting a one of two. If you have a, an account set up with the IRS for for like direct deposit for for your uh, your, your tax returns, say when you filed your tax return in 2018, or if you happen to be somebody that filed it for 2019 and you gave them a bank account to directly deposit any, any refund that you were getting, then the IRS will, they will use that, uh, that routing number and account number to direct deposit the $1,200 or the $2,400. If it's, if, it, if it's two people uh, in the household that qualify um, into that account, let's say that's about three weeks out though for, for that. If they don't have uh, a direct deposit account, they will physically mail you a check just the way that the IRS would mail you a check for a refund. And, I'm sorry? They're saying 13 weeks on if they're mailing you a paper check to process them all. Yeah, they said best case eight. They just can't, you know, it wouldn't happen any sooner than eight. Yeah, so. I, I read that it was gonna take them as much as 13 weeks to go through and process all the paper checks. So don't expect that, like if you haven't, if you haven't, uh, so that, so that, I guess that's bad if you haven't had a refund in a while or had to make a payment. So, um, I guess, you know, I had a refund last year, so I guess I will, uh, I, I, I've had an overpayment, so I will get that. But if you have had a, had a, in the last two years is what I read, right? So 19 or 18. Yeah. Um, a direct deposit account, they'll direct deposit right in there. But right. you gotta, you gotta figure too, that they've been, optimistic on a lot of their other projections, like the $10,000 grant that's supposed to hit in three days. Now it looks like it's going to be several weeks. Um, the, you know, the, the, the PPP where all the banks are supposed to be ready to start taking those applications tomorrow. And the banks are saying, nah, that's, that's not going to happen. Oh yeah. So, I, had, I had an inter interesting conversation today too, like uh, with uh, the unemployment office. So they actually called me um, cause they knew that I was the officer of my business and I was taking unemployment. <laughs> so I had a, an interesting call with them too. I, I, I know we talked about this last time and I've, you know, you know, I think a lot of us are kind of hesitant to file for unemployment for ourselves and things like that. Um, but I totally qualified. We, we had a conversation about it. Um, I, I would highly suggest doing so. So, so for me and my wife to each, cause we're both officers in the business, we've always taken a salary from the business and we both qualified it's going to be with the new government incentive. It's going to be almost eighteen hundred dollars, eighteen hundred and seventy dollars a week for us um, for our unemployment benefit. I just got word on that today. Um, so that's going to be faster than some of that money from. That's going to be faster than probably some of that money that we're talking about. That that stimulus relief money. Uh, that's supposed to be happening in the next two weeks for sure. Greg says that his uh, accountant told him that the feds are setting up a website that uh, you can add your direct deposit info into. So God, I'd be scared. Cool if, if, if they do that, just be careful of scams. There's going to be so oh, many. Scams. Yeah, but sure. Make sure it's a legit website. There's going to be so many scammers guys. So just like, yeah. Speaking of, uh, my mother-in-law has been hit by three scammers already. My mother-in-law is 91. And she um, is a prime target. Uh, the last one that just hit her up, uh, she's she drugged them along for a while. She loves to mess with them. Um, and they uh, wanted her checking account information. They wanted her social security card. They wanted everything. So yeah. because they're going to get her her $1,200 stimulus check 
immediately. Yeah, so of course. She could get it into her account today. So Amy yeah. was asking if you're a single owner, apply. can you apply? Are, are you talking about uh, for unemployment? Because typically the answer would be no, because you are, you are not paying yourself a check. So I file as an S corp. So I pay myself a salary, but the rules have all changed on that. So you can collect at least the federal uh, unemployment of $600 per week right now. Um, if you, if you apply through your state and they will, they will have expedited applications, uh, for that. So I don't know what your state is typically, but typically, um, typically if you are self-employed or your LLC is a partnership and not like, so, so my business is an LLC, but we're taxed as an S corp. And we've done that because we've always paid ourselves. And then we've taken benefits from the business like healthcare and then paid that through our, you know, through a payroll deduction. So yes, we would qualify for unemployment because we've always paid into the system. But even if you've never paid in right now, even if you have been self-employed or however you've paid yourself, you do qualify for the $600 a month from what I understand. And I would get guidance on that. Like, uh, a lot of lot of the uh, 1089 contractors uh, who like Uber drivers and whatnot, they're all qualifying for unemployment benefits. So no, it's a whole new, whole new world out there. I, my suggestion would be ask the question. And yeah. You just never know what type of answer you're going to get. I mean, every bit. So we were talking about money as oxygen. Every bit that you can secure right now. Um, <laughs> I mean, Tom, you know, I wasn't going to do some of this stuff at first, but I went out and I refinanced my house and got another 120000 out of my house. I sold some stocks and we already had a lot of savings. I mean, I have a huge crap pile of money and I'm still scared. Like, like, and so I know of those of you that haven't been around and haven't built up your wealth and haven't been in this business as long or whatever, I know it's scarier, but leverage all of these opportunities. Do not be afraid to file for unemployment or do whatever you can. Cause I'm telling you every dollar matters to me as well, because I don't want to spend my personal money on this. I want to leverage what resources the government's given to anybody, you know, so I'm not embarrassed to take that money. I've heard other people saying, I don't want to do that. Well, do it. Like it is not even a it is not even a question of morals. Everyone is entitled to that. You are laid off your business through no fault of your own. You did not make this happen. We, you know, and, and the government is trying to help the economy and, and you failing is not what they want. They want you to come through this on the other side. So I, I just cannot, it, you know, I cannot stress enough. You don't need to be embarrassed about these things. I know that it seems like counter to what we've always done. Um, because we're, you know, we're these self-made people and we control our own lives and do these things. But I mean, you know, I, I think I might've even talked Tom into doing, it. I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's quite ready. Yet. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm thinking, I mean, actually I intend to do it. I just haven't gotten around to that yet. I've been uh, you know, doing triage. The, you know, it's on my list. Just haven't gotten to it. Two weeks ago. <laughs> And I'm just checking, Matt. So I think what I heard is anybody whose loan doesn't get approved, they should contact you because you're flush. Yeah. No, no. I just, oh. I just, Tom made me super, Tom made me super, super nervous two weeks ago when he was telling me all the stuff he was doing. I was like, oh, I'm not doing enough. <laughs> I'm not even close. Like, like I'm not even doing enough. But uh, yeah, yeah, definitely do everything you can. I think we've, I think we've had, I've said this before when I've been on and, um, you know, we, we, I guess we're circling back to money. And again, when I, my, my, my also, my, my, my advice on this is don't let this take up your whole day, schedule this into your day for a part of your day and then be done with it for a while and then take a break from it. Like make this like, yeah, make some, some time for these, like, you know, these learning opportunities like this. And this is just, I consider this more of a fireside chat because I can't give you legal advice or, or financial advice. All I can do is tell you what I'm doing and doing my best to, you know, get myself on the other side of this. But, um, you know, you know, I, I think, you know, getting back to what we were talking about earlier is, you know, the habits that what we're doing now is just, you know, structuring your day so that this is not every waking moment. I mean, I sleep better now that like the first couple of weeks of this, man, I, I was not sleeping well. I'm, I'm feeling a little better. I actually had my first good night of sleep last night in a while. And, um, and I think, uh, I think a lot of that had to do with just that I've been getting back into my routines and, and, you know, finding that, that part of it instead of staying up till midnight every night, like trying to do things that are unproductive and then being on Facebook messenger with 50 <laughs> other people. And really knows what I'm talking about because she was part of that chat too. It's, it's like nonstop and it's, there's useful information, but it's like, Wading through it is just like mentally exhausting. 
Uh, Matt, I do have a question, Matt. Uh, Denise wants to know if you're still getting a paycheck. You're not getting a paycheck anymore because of the UI, right? I, so I stopped taking a paycheck uh, three weeks ago because I saw this kind of come in and I saw this come in a, a, a head out. And so um, I was just trying to hold on to cash in the business and we pay ourselves pretty aggressively. Um, you know, so we're trying to, you know, not have a, as much profits in the business and pay ourselves an aggressive salary. Um, just my strategy, other people like to do draws, different things, and we do a mixture of both. Um, but yeah, so about three weeks ago, and I wish I'd done it five weeks ago is to stop, you know, stop paying myself, but, um, and just had even more money in the business. And, and, you know, that, that was a strategy we took. So yeah, there's, there's really nothing, you know, cash flow wise that I, that would allow me to take a salary like I was taking before. I would, I would say, um, I'm making less now per month than I was taking in salary before. So, um, yeah. So Chris is uh, telling us that, uh, I, I, I guess in Wisconsin anyway, that uh, ITs can provide for unemployment insurance. They just have to update their website and so on and so forth. Uh, her husband's a uh, very popular DJ. And if you follow her on Facebook, she's a uh, cover charge girl <laughs> yeah so so i i think i think that's a that's kind of a gray area in the past like yeah this this would have been a no there would have been a, a solid no not even a gray area like you know prior to uh prior to this this bill that was passed i guess it was last tuesday now and we're still kind of sort sort through all this um yeah that you would be you'd be out of luck if you were self-employed or or an llc partnership and just took draws for your income and even if you paid quarterly taxes you would have been out. You'd be out of luck because you're typically not paying into the UI system at, at that. At that, and, you know, and, and there's going to be some interesting consequences of of some of these changes when the when the dust settles. Um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the, the the business models where like Uber can treat their drivers as independent contractors, like Congress is 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 already talking about. Well, we're going to have to change that. There are going to have to be employees moving you know, forward. I mean, it's not going to happen, you know, next week, there's other things to worry about, but eventually it's going to be a whole lot harder for, for, for companies to, to designate their, uh, their work with those independent contractors. I think that's going to be a huge fallout from that's going to be a huge fallout from this time. I agree because I mean, there, all those employees are basically getting paid out of this benefit pool and moving forward states and the federal government are going to have to reevaluate whether that was fair and right. And if they can allow that to happen again, you know, this is this is this a one time bailout or is this like, you know, an ongoing thing that like, you know, that, that what you're know, saying is that that that, you know, people need the money. So we need to do it. And it's the right thing to do. But moving forward, everybody who's getting these these funds, the system has to be set up in a way where they're contributing to the pool. So the next time it happens. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's going to change. The, I think it's going to change the gig economy quite a bit where. You know, if it if it, you know, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a it's a job. It's not, you know, like this whole gig thing is, it's you know, we've a lot of us in our own industry have skated around this and successfully done so, um, because honestly, this administration doesn't care as much. I mean, it might not have, you know, and that and that's a bonus. Like, you know, like if you're this administration has not really enforced that as much as the prior administration. So that was that's good if that's what you were trying to do before. But I don't see that. I, I see that being a huge fallout from this, and I think that that's going to change. If you do business like that, I would expect um, that that to be something that affects you. And if and if that's something that hurts you now because some competitors are able to do things cheaper and, and with less overhead, and um, I think that's going to level some some of the playing field. I definitely agree with that. That's that's a that's a real reality that's going to come from this. And and Matt uh, Bill Gelderman, I guess, have a comment here. Yeah. <laughs> Really good time to buy stock in the steering group. I I think that's a great business. I think we're all going to need we're all going to need to actually be evaluating our employees from afar before we before we see them. We should all be. I, I, should, I, think, I think that was directed at you personally. I, I know, I know, but I was <laughs> I was plugging his I was plugging his business. Um, <laughs> Bill's an old Fine. friend, and I think he has a good product. Um, I think uh, I think his son would be would be sad if he sold it out from underneath him to me though. I think that would be I think that would be rough, Bill, to do to your to do to your son-in-law. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll talk about it. Sure. Hey um, Heather, um, I don't know if anybody uh, knows about um, Pennsylvania 
unemployment law. You guys don't know, happen to know anything about Pennsylvania, do you? I I don't, but I would suggest yeah. I would suggest just keep checking. Yeah. What what Tom? It's north of Maryland. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom is a geography king. Hey Tom, um, it's time to um, put up our link for cleaning business today. And I also, I have a tell it like it is question for you. I don't know if you can do this or not, but there has just been so much conversation around the $600 unemployment federal monies, whether that is going to come on top or if that's going to be on top to fill the gap up to $600. Any chance you can find out the truth about that? Sure. We were talking about that earlier. We still, I mean, I don't think that we have any definitive answers. So no. um, I feel like that, that's just, um, nobody really knows. Everybody kind of thinks they know the, the truth, but uh, right now there is no, I'd love to know what it is. I'd love to hear from you. You know, what, what, what's the, the real gig on that? I think we're all just interpreting it right now, what our understandings of it are. So my interpretation, my interpretation is that that $600 is on top of what the state is already doing. And so, yes, that's going to create an incentive that people are actually making more to be employed than they are to come back to work. And, and, and that's going to be a challenge. That's going to be on your culture to bring people back and figure it out. And I think the way you have to, you're going to have to balance that. I mean, you know, like, okay, so, so yeah, you get 16 weeks of unemployment at that rate, but we're going to bring you back and you have a guaranteed job through this. There's, there's 30% of people that are unemployed. You have a job, you know, and that job is here for you and going to be there for you past this, past this short-term economic benefit. And if we have to lay you off again before the end of the year, for whatever reason, if we don't make it, you can still, you still have more of that unemployment benefit. You haven't burned through it all. So I, th I think you're going to have to have some one-on-one -on -one conversations with her tough that are going to be tough with some people. They're going to be like, I feel safer and more secure on this unemployment right now, but you're going to have to make sure you're really clear with them. That's a short term. That is a short term gap. That is 16 weeks that that is going to be in effect. You know, that, that, that reminds me of, of something that I, that I meant to mention. If you remember this time a week ago, we were pointing out that going all the way back to the beginning of time, the, record for one week's, you know, the number of people who filed for unemployment in one week was 695,000. Last week, it went up to 3.3 .3 million. Last week, 3.3 .3 million people filed for unemployment in one week. The numbers came out today for, for last week, and it went up to 6.6 .6 million people. So the, so the number last week was like four and a half times higher than anything we'd ever seen. The number this week was twice as high as last week. And together, that's 11 million people in a two-week period that have filed for unemployment. Just to think if they were able to process, because all those had, had to be in a computer and just, you know, it's amazing that government was able to process 11 million of those, not even process, but at least- I was amazed they had time to call me today and ask me about my business. And like, I was amazed that they were calling me personally today. Like they're, they're, they're still providing a fairly good level of service on getting through this. Depends on your state and the technology they have, but they're, they're, they're getting through it somehow. But, you know, if you look at the entire workforce, I don't know, that's somewhere between, I don't know, around 7% give or take of, of, of the entire workforce filed for unemployment in a two-week period. We were at, we at 3.8 before that, so we're probably close to 11% unemployment. I started my business in 2008, and uh, so I didn't go through the downturn. I kind of went up, you know, started on the bottom of a, of a cycle. Um, and I know, Tom, Tom, you've been through something like this, but I will say that there is one upside to this. And maybe it's not going to be as good because of this unemployment benefit. But when when we get to the other side of this, there's going to be a lot of good people available. There's going to be a lot of restaurants that don't come back from this that had some really great servers that have great customer service skills. They're going to be looking for a great job. Um, you know, so if some of your people don't come back. The 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 flip side of this is that there's going to be, be be people with work ethic that understand that their that their unemployment benefits are going to run out and they need to be looking for a job and they're going to be. They're going to find those companies that are hiring. And, and I mean, I'll tell you what, I, 2008 through 2010, I had the best team I've ever had. I mean, just I, 
I, I have employees that I'm still friends with. And maybe it was because it was early in the company and you know, like those people are imprinted on you a little bit. But man, it was really, it was really easy to find great people. I had like home ec teachers and um, I had uh, grad students and I had, I mean, just incredible people that like it would be really difficult to find now in this, in this environment three months ago. And now I think you're going to be, the flip side of this is at some point there's going to be, a, there's still going to be a lot of fallout on the economy and there's going to be a lot of good people available to our companies. So silver lining, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> It's uh, it's there is a silver lining, hopefully. Uh, let me. Uh, what what's this? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. That wasn't. That was yeah, a, not everybody knows. It's it's here, kitty kitty, right? It's, it's uh, here, kitty kitty. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tiger the, King. Me and Tom both like the Tiger King. You guys don't know what they're talking about. I had no clue what they were talking about. Apparently, there's a Netflix show called Tiger King. Liz yeah. is obviously more productive than us. Um, <laughs> I, I have carved out Netflix time. Supposedly, supposedly, this uh, lady killed her rich husband and fed him to the tigers. <laughs> but uh, her nemesis... Uh, <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Where's Joe? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good, Tom. Thanks. Oh, there he is. That's Joe Exotic. He's, uh, they're not, they're, let's just say they're not friends. Um, anyway, cleaning business today. Here we are. This is, uh, how you subscribe. Uh, if you go to our special link on coronavirus dash downloads, it shows you uh, like all of the resources that we've talked in 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 shared over the last uh, going on a few weeks, I guess. Added a few here. Um, payroll protection plan. Uh, this is a link on the uh, Treasury uh, website, which has got you know, basically the application form um, that if you want to fill some of this out and read this, you'll be better prepared to uh, work with your bank when they're ready to do the SBA lending if you're going down that path. And we uh, pointed out yesterday too, all the really neat resources on the uh, ISSA page, especially if you go down here to the bottom, like cleaning industry tips. These Tip sheets are awesome, uh, specifically focused at uh, coronavirus. I would uh, recommend uh, everybody uh, take a look at those and, and, and download those and, and put them to work. Yeah, it's a great time. It's a great time to to work on your training materials, right? So, like finding all those resources and putting them, putting them into your training manual is going to be be a good use of your time. Yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, are we good? Do we want to um, close good. out with one last comment about how to rejuvenate yourself and yeah. reinvigorate? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, yeah, I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, like we were talking about before, I mean, carving out carving out time for yourself through all this. And, and you know, like we said, I mean, um, I'll probably still go on a walk with Angela tonight. We'll talk about our day and just like, and catch up. And again, that's some physical time. That's some time away from the kids. My 13 year old can watch them for a minute and, and, uh, and get, and get through this. But, uh, yeah, I think for me, it's, for me, it's just making sure that I turn this stuff off for a couple hours and put the phone down and walk away from this for a couple hours here and there, because it is, definitely inform information overload. Um, and, I, and I can handle a lot of information. I've always been able to like process a lot and take in a lot and, and do that. You know, Angela's different. She doesn't want all this overload. She doesn't like to watch, you know, the news or anything. She likes to, you know, process stuff at her own time. This, this is like, you know, everyone's going to process this differently. So for her, she doesn't even have Facebook on her phone. She gets on Facebook once a, once a month and like, you know, responds to stuff and like, you know, so we're all doing this differently, but my biggest tip right now would be to maybe take the Facebook app off your phone and just like consciously 
consciously use that app um, when you're when you're on your computer and make and when you're you're scheduling time to kind of be doing in that. Um, I could use that tip because it's it's a constant uh, flow of information. Some of it not so helpful. You want to say anything about that fancy dancy bike we see hanging in the background? Uh, a couple of them. So I've got uh, there's like three bikes you can see in the picture. So this oh, is. A yeah triathlon bike there's another one over there in the corner that's the one that i have on the trainer there's a tv that's where i watch tiger king while i'm on my bike uh that's angela's that's angela's bike hanging there and then this that's my favorite bike that's my gravel bike and then my first bike ever that i had when i used to race when i was in my 20s i can't just i cannot manage to get rid of that bike uh when i used to do bike racing when i was uh, between 18 and 22 um, so, so that's one of my big, big things for, for getting out and getting on the bike. And, you know, um, I live in the city, but what's funny is in the city is there's, you know, we, we have rivers in St. Louis, right? So there's actually these gravel access trails where they actually like the city workers use them, uh, to do work and stuff like that. Well, those, those trails are empty right now. There's no city workers out there doing anything. So I take my bikes out on these gravel trails that are designed for, you know, access to all these, I consider them open sewers. They're called rivers, like river to pair and stuff like that around, around the city of St. Louis. They're basically, they're like open sewers. I don't know what they are. They're gross, <laughs> but you can ride your bike for, for miles and miles on these, on these things and not be, and not be by traffic. So that's a healthy habit. I was talking earlier about getting out for a run. I might still, um, I might still get some miles in today and, and do, you know, some, just some really light exercise. But my suggestion is with exercise too is, is that exercise can stress you out too if you're just adding something really intense into your routine. Like like what is those those Billy Blank videos from the 90s and stuff like that where it's like those extreme hit routines and stuff like that? I don't oh, recommend yeah. that if you haven't been exercising for a while. Like I'd start out slow like with a walk and like just move your body and, and, and find something. Um, but if you don't know me, I was probably 350 pounds three years ago. So I kind of re-found my... Um, my love of exercise and racing from when I was younger and uh, got, you know, got back into this. So no matter where you are in your fitness, fitness spectrum, now is probably a better time than ever to focus on your fitness because you've got a little bit of extra time on your, on your hands probably. Yeah. Greg says he has a vintage twin that he still rides. That's cool. Tom, I know you do some running every day Thinker. too. Well, most days. I still, I still run. Yeah. Hit and miss. I'm in, I'm in a different mode right now. It depends what time, you know, I'm thinking about my habits and I've got different habits depending upon where I am. And I guess for the last couple of weeks, I'm in, I guess, strategic thinking mode. And, um, you know, I'm spending a lot of time reading, a lot of time trying to keep up on the news, a lot of time, a lot of unstructured time, just trying to figure stuff out. There'll come a time when that needs to shift to, actually implementing stuff and developing stuff and doing stuff. But, uh, you know, I guess I'm trying to figure out where am I, you know, where do we, where do we need to be going before we start running too fast in any one direction? Yeah. So, oh. sig signals breaking down. So that, to answer yeah. your question, you know, when, when I'm on my game and I'm in being productive mode, yeah, I get up at four 50 in the morning and I, I mean, I don't run far. I go about two miles a day. Um, and I'm back home with a cup of coffee watching uh, Squat Box on CNBC before six o'clock. But that's my, my normal drill in the morning. But uh, yeah, I'm not, I uh, haven't been getting up at 4.50 for the last couple of weeks. Like Matt, slacking. Yeah. Enjoying your mornings. Still doing Squat Box, though. Yeah. All righty. <laughs> So um, anything that anybody wants to know for tomorrow, go ahead, put it, post it in the thread. We'll see it and hopefully get some of that stuff on tomorrow's call. And we'll close up the week. Take care. We'll see you here tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Thank you, Matt. Bye, y'all. Thanks, Matt. All right. Thanks, guys. Good talk. Bye. See you soon.